take me home to the land of the Pentecost. Hear that stream, let me dream neath the sky. This old heart keeps on beating, repeating fond echoes of the brave and the bold riding During the 1870s, the wildest spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. First time I ever saw him when he didn't make a grandstand entrance into town. Must be the heat's got it. Could be. The horses seem tuckered out. It's too hot to stand out here. Beats me how people like to stand and watch boats and trains and stagecoaches come in. Maybe there's a pretty girl on the coach. <laughs> Out in here, too, is What was that Jeff said about a pretty girl? <laughs> you sure got big ears, Letty. Why, he just said that you was the prettiest girl in seven counties. Oh, really? And outside of Miss Langtree, he'd never seen such rare... Judge, one of the passengers is shaking up pretty badly. She's too sick to go on. She's really sick. Really bad, eh? Well, bring her in. We'll put her in my room, Jeff. <laughs> Now, ma'am, just take it easy. Now, don't you worry, ma'am. We'll get you in out of this heat. I... I just need to sit for a moment. Hey, you'll be all right, ma'am. You just leave it out there. Now, get some water, Jeff. Now, don't you worry, ma'am. We're going to take good care of you. You're... You're very, very kind. There. You can just relax. Here you are, Judge. Oh, yeah. Here, ma'am. You, you just take a little of this water. There. There we are. Thank you. Well, my name's Bean. Judge Bean. I'm... I'm Mrs. Brown. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Brown. Uh, this is my niece, Letty. Hello, Mrs. Brown. This is my deputy, Chef, Jeff. A little rest will help you, Mrs. Brown. Uncle Roy, Jeff. So the driver said the way he understands it, she's been traveling around the country for a long time, looking for her son, Jim. Yeah, poor soul. <laughs> Uncle Roy? How is she, Letty? I don't know, Jeff. I don't think she can make it. She has practically no pulse. Uncle Roy, can't we do something for her? She keeps calling for a boy. I don't know what we can do, honey. But if we could only find him. Uh, you say she can talk and, and still make sense? Yes, I think so. Let's go see what we can find out. Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown. The judge would like to talk to you about your son. He might be able to help you. I sure know a lot of people in the state of Texas, Miss Brown. Maybe I know your son. If we had a description, ma'am. Now you'll oh. take it easy. His name is Jim. He's 23 years old. Last June. We always had a cake. When he was home, he was a good boy. He just wanted to go out into the world. 
What do you look like, ma'am? He's tall. Has brown eyes and curly hair. I always used to be so proud of you. He had the rosiest cheeks when he was a little fellow. Is there something in your purse, Mrs. Brown? A picture. His picture. May I get it for you? It was taken when he was just 17. Before he had his accident. What accident, ma'am? Well, he was real fond of guns. And one day something happened and he was powder burned. And now he has a black scar on his left hand. He... What do you think, Judge? It could be. Young man like that don't change much between 17 and 23. He liked guns. Well, Mrs. Brown, we... If there's anything that's going to be done, we better do it now. You know, they tell me Ab Hanlon's got a new man riding with him. Young fella, and he's new in this part of Texas. So I've heard. You think maybe this could be Jim Brown? Well, there's one way to find out. That's right. Go out and ask Hanlon. How is she? Just hanging on. I hope she can see her son before she goes. Yeah, well, I'd better ride. I'll go. No, this is a job for an older head, Jeff. It also takes a head can stand the heat, Judge. Are you implying I that? I sure am. That's a mean ride across that border. Besides, you have things to do here. You know where Ab Hanlon's gangs hold up? About two miles on the other side of the border, somewhere near Fishtail Flats. How do you figure on getting in touch with them? I don't figure on getting in touch with them. I'm going to let them find me. Uncle Roy, has Mrs. Brown's son got a criminal record? No, but he will have if he rides with Ab Hanlon. I'll be riding, Judge. I'll be mighty careful, boy. Hurry back, Jeff. Friendly, aren't you? Trying to alter your territory, mister. What do you want? You're just the man I want to see, Hanlon. Answer his question. You ought to teach your man some manners, Hanlon. I try to, lawman, but it just won't work. I take it you came to see me. That's right. I'm looking for somebody. What's his name? Jim Brown. There ain't no Jim Brown around here. What do you want him for? I want to do him a favor. His mother's at Bean's store. She's sick. She's going to die, and she wants to see her son. You know what this Jim Brown looks like? Yeah. He's tall, has curly hair, he's young. And he has a black scar on his left hand. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe he knows him. Yeah, maybe he does. Hold it. It's a trick. My mother wouldn't come out here looking for me. You never know what old folks will do. Well, I'm not going to ride into town to find out. I think you should. Why? Listen, son. Anybody that rides with me don't ask questions. They do as they're told. Mostly, I don't even tell what I'm intending to do. But this time, I will, because you've got a chore to do. What is it? Questions again. Now, pay attention. 
I want you to get a complete layout of Bean's store. Where the safe is, where he keeps his guns, the cash box, everything. Why? Because someday I'm going to ride right up to Bean's store and knock it off. And what you find out for me is just what I need to do it. Oh, uh, my friend here uh, just happened to remember that his name is Jim Brown. He was afraid his mother wouldn't like the company he's keeping. I can understand that. I told him I wouldn't have anybody riding with me that didn't want to see his poor old mother. You know, people like you amaze me, Hanlon. You all have a soft spot somewhere. Yes, yeah, sir, I'm just a real softy. A real softy, mister. You won't be sorry, Jim. That's just what I told him, law man. Just what I told him. Good work, Jeff. Jim Brown, you want to see your mother, you better get a wiggle on. There's your mother, Jim Brown. Mom. Mom, Mom. You've been busy, son. That's right, Mom. Awful busy. I can always tell when you've been working hard. You always forget to get a haircut. Thanks for coming, Jim. What's so good to see you, Mom? It was Helen that made him come back. I always say that if you dig deep enough in a bad man, you can find a soft spot. <laughs> Betty. I was all set to hate Jim Brown. Now I just feel sorry for him. His mother thinks he's quite a boy. Oh, she sure does. Yeah, hey, he's big and he's husky and he likes to show off his muscles. Impress people. A lot of folks like that. I think what Jim would really like is a repair shop where he could fix things. He says he's real good at that. I'm beat. I'm going home. Goodbye, Jeff. And thank you. Judge, I'd sure appreciate it if you bring that fence wire out for me in the morning. Bring it out first thing in the morning before it gets hot. Thanks. From Arizona, I moved down to Texas. And I met all these important people. Ma, you'd be surprised at all the different ways a guy can make money down here. And right now, I'm, I'm just looking around so I can find a, some kind of a business to invest my money in. Jim. Jim. Mm-hmm. Your mother. How is she? I think she's going to get well. You're good medicine. Good morning, son. Good morning, Judge. I'm Miss Brown. I think she's feeling a lot better, Uncle Roy. Well, I guess you just what the doctor ordered. Yes, sir. I'll fix some breakfast. Don't worry about me, honey. I want to get that wire out of the chest before it gets too hot. Well, how long will you be gone? Just a couple of hours. Well, come on, son. You can earn your keep by carrying out this wire for me. Yes, sir. I feel real strong today. <laughs> Well, what with having your ma get well, you got a right to feel strong, son. <laughs> oh, there's that wire right over there. Yes, sir. You want some help? Why, shucks, no, Miss Letty. <sighs> this is my day. It's going to be a mean one, too. Ma taught me never to argue with a lady, but I still say it's going to be a great day. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Yes, sir. You got a problem, son? I've got quite a few, Judge. Which one are you referring to? I was wondering what you was going to do to make good on them brags you made to your mother last night. Well, I... I don't know. Any reason you can't make good on them? I never did amount to anything, Judge. It always seems like I was moving from place to place. I can't seem to find what I'm good for. Well, most everybody has that problem. Fella's got to just figure what he's cut out to do. Take you, for instance. 
I don't think you was meant to be an outlaw. I guess I'm not. Jeff was telling me he was having quite a talk coming in last night. Said you're pretty good at fixing things, like guns, pots and pans, harness, things like that. Your ma said you were good, too. I can fix most anything, but me. You know, out here in Texas, a fella can set up a shop, say a place like El Paso, do right well. But how do you get started? Oh, you just call on your friends. I can't think of one. I can think of one. Me, for instance. You think it over and I'll be back in a couple hours. Come on, boy. Hello there, Jim. Ab. How's that dear, sweet old mother of yours? What are you doing here? Oh, I just thought I'd mosey down and visit for a spell. I notice you and that judge are real cozy-like. I'm a little disappointed, though, Jim, that you didn't mention that Ab Hanlon is your friend. I'm all through, Ab. I'm not riding with you anymore. Oh, yes, you are. And right now... No, I'm not. Hey, I've got to teach you a few manners. Now, listen. I heard the judge say he was going to be gone for a couple of hours. Well, that's just fine, because I don't go in for rough stuff. Now, this is what I want you to do for me. What? I want you to get the combination of the safe from that niece of his. Then in a few minutes, my boys and I'll ride in and uh, scoop up the cash and ride off as smooth as anything. I won't do it. Oh, yes, you will. Because if you don't cooperate, I'll see to it that your mother finds out what kind of a person you really are. And if you do cooperate, well, uh, nobody will tell her the truth. You wouldn't want the news to kill the old lady, would you? And you know it would, Jim. Now, you got 15 minutes. Get going. You, your breakfast is ready. Oh, don't worry about your mother. She's all right. She's sitting up. And I think she'd like to see you. How do you feel, Ma? Better. Sit down, son. You've got troubles. You always could tell how I feel. Are you worried about all those lies you told me last night? How did you know? Don't you remember, Jim? I could always tell. You've got good stuff in you, son. But you need a mother. And someday a good wife to keep you in line. Probably all the things you've been doing these past four years haven't been good. Not very, Ma. I'll tell you why I'm going to live, son. Because you need me. You need me to help bring out all the good in you. And as long as you are good, I'll stick with you until the good Lord finds me another job. Ma, do you mean that? Every word of it. Then I have something to do. Don't get scared at whatever happens. I've got no reason to be scared now, son. You go do what you have to do. Your breakfast is getting cold, Jim. Never mind the breakfast, Miss Letty. Ab Hanlon and his men are outside. They're threatening to raid the store unless you give me the combination of the safe. Is that the kind of a person you are, Jim? No, I won't play it their way. You know something? It's almost worth it to give the money to Hanlon. Just so your mother won't find out what kind of a person you are. Ma knows all about me. That's why I'm going to do what's right from now on. Miss Letty, we only have a few minutes. Could you ride for the judge and Jeff? Maybe I can hold Ab off for a while. But it's an hour's ride, Jim, even if I could get away. See, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Maybe we can both hold them off. Come on.
Maybe the kid's crazy. There are only a couple of more minutes. Now let's do some hoping and praying. I'll be in with your mother. Don't you be scared, no matter what happens. And maybe you better cover your ears. How's my boy doing? He's not a boy anymore, Mrs. Brown. He's a man now. Good. Hey, Chuck! Morning, Judge. I thought I'd come down and save you part of a ride. This is where I'm going to start my fencing. You go to work out here in this heat? No, sir. I'm coming down the store and keep you company. <laughs> keep Letty company, you mean. <laughs> Say, Mrs. Brown's much better this morning. That's good. I think the only thing she needed was to see that boy of hers. Yeah, he's not a bad kid. All he needs is just a chance. Hey, Judge, did you see what I see? Hey, there's my drawers on the windmill. That means trouble. You better come with me, Jeff. There's a window in rear. I figure that's where the old lady is. Tell Shorty to give us a minute, then go in through the window. Hey, Shorty. In one minute, go in the back window. The back window. That windmill. Judge sure believes in being clean, don't he? That's a funny place to hang wash. Come in, Al. I didn't have to miss, Al. That's just my way of paying you back for sending me down here. That's my boy, Jim, playing with guns again. I hope he doesn't get hurt. I hope so, too. I always said a man should never go peeking in a lady's bedroom. You're so right. I'll be right back. I can fix guns and I can shoot them. I only hope we can hold out. We will. You better go back in the other room. Hey, this ain't easy. Shut up. I'm going to teach that pup a lesson. You see those boxes on the porch? Well, get a hold of a big one. And when I give the signal, heave it through the window. And then we'll rush the door. Come on. said he was fighting on. Yeah, let's look. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, ma'am. I was just about to tell my son if he's going to play with guns, he should try not to get hurt. Oh, Ma. <laughs> Stop talking like a little boy, Jim. 
Anybody looking for you around the country, son? No, sir, and that's the truth. I reckon you'll go straight from now on. <laughs> Say, by the way, I got some friends in El Paso. They'd be mighty glad to see you set up business down there. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a note to them right now. Come on, lady. She does my writing for me. <laughs> You can tell what side he's fighting on. You know, there's nothing like a mother's love to cure a sick heart. You're, You're so, so right, right, Judge. Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's lock these fellas up. to stand. 